I'll, I'll say this, you know, when you, when you go to the, fr it, when the truth lies in the fringe, you're going to end up having to tolerate some fringe ideas. I will call it out, but I'm not going to capsize the movement to, 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 to maintain some kind of impossible level of purity. Um, so what I kind of take, the biggest message I take from Moldberg and, and thinking about how modern society works is that information producing systems are really, really hard to get right and very, very hard and very, very easy to become extremely pathological. Now, yeah. all of the defenses that you're making, there are lots of people within academia who could make the exact same defense. They could say, look, I run a journal. My journal has high standards. If there's a factual error published in my journal, the next yeah. edition of the journal, there will be a page with that factual 100%, error. 100%, yes. And so they can make, and so there are, but the fact is it doesn't change. I don't blame them for that. The, the, the information system that you are part of is systemat systematically deranged. And I still think it's a perfectly legitimate criticism that I will make of any academic, including uh, people, you know, I used to know from my days at university, including me members of my family who are, who, are, who are academics. I will tell them this to their face and I don't have any problem saying it. Say, look, you know that at the institutions that you work for, there is an incredible amount of depraved filth being churned out that has incredibly uh, uh, damaging consequences to society. And what have you done to stop it? And they'll tell me the same thing. They say, look, I just, I just write about Virgil. What do you want from me? I don't write trash. Leave me alone. And I say, well, too bad, because you're part of the system and you have some kind of responsibility to fix it. What have you done to fix it? Well, so I mean, I'm afraid you may have, you, you may have in this instance accomplished the impossible. You have gotten me to sympathize with modern academics. Uh, I, I guess, uh, what, what do you want? I, I have never told a uh, scholar of Virgil, I don't, I and mean, I know a lot of professors, I have never told, like, you know, a, a mathematician to resign because, you know, the African American study department is publishing trash. I, I've never done that. Uh, well, I, are, you, I, I, are, are, you, are you expecting the math department? To Mo, 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 Mo did say that um, um, in back in the unqualified reservation study. He's got a funny line, actually. Uh, can't, can't remember it. Like uh, I guess if they heart. all collectively resigned. But, no, but yeah. there, are, look, there are lots of actual things that academics could do. So one thing I, one point that I have made specifically to them is that those who are on appointment committees, if you know someone who's a communist, just don't appoint them. You know, no one, no one can look in wow. your soul. No one can look in your soul and tell you that, uh, that you know, you didn't uh, appoint them for this or that reason. Find some justification for not appointing them and don't do it. And... Because, but you insist on sticking to this thing. As I'll appoint, I'll, in my vote in the appointments committee, I'll just, I'll just do whoever has the best research record, you know, and I'll ignore their political proclivities. And with, meanwhile, the this, this, your, the communists that are also with you on the um, appointments committee don't do that. They just appoint the most left wing person they can find, and that's why your university, over the course of your lifetime, you know, because I know people um, at British universities in particular, which. In the 1960s, even really weren't particularly left wing. They had a left wing, but they weren't left wing, um, even in the sense that American universities were kind of always have kind of been dominated by liberals. I, anyway, I don't know. My I point is, is that I, I, I'm happy to tell them that you stood by and done nothing and preserved your career while you watched the, the institutions you worked for become just intellectual sewage factories. So, Do so the, no, I say the, the same thing. The, 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 the solution to explicit ideology is to create an ideological bias in the opposite direction in secret. Yes. Why not? Because like because that, well, first of all, that would never work. Come on. Like the, the, try. the solution has to be. <laughs> you can try. Why not? Oh try? yeah. Or what? Or, or I mean, like, well, first of all, in some sense, I kind of am, right? I mean, I could, I could, I could. Okay, I'll, I'll give you this challenge, right? Can you give me a piece of advice that is not some form of just completely? shutting down uh the activities i'm running okay yes very good um i would say maybe devote um two hours a week um to picking up errors that you saw in uh people you respect uh their content write them a personal email saying here are all the mistakes you made you know you don't have to make a public apology or something but i think you should go back and correct the the article there you go. I, I probably have six hours a week generously to do this kind of blogging stuff. Uh, that is essentially cut. I'm, I'm going to cut my output in half so that I can catch minor factual errors in other people's work. 
Okay, maybe you personally don't have the time. So, you know, you've got a large commenter base. How many subscribers do you have? 6,000, 7,000, something like that? Say to someone, a lot of these people for sure have a lot of free time to spend on Substack. There, 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 there definitely is no shortage of people okay. who have free time on Substack. And just say, like, who would like to be an internal dissident right fact checker? Okay, we great. Have all will, but okay, well, I'll make a correction. It will never be publicly published except by the authors that do it. It will be sent to them privately. Yeah, fine. That would be a great idea. That's that's like a oh, first. Let's do, it. let's do it right now. Okay, so if you're if you're so inclined, uh, and you would like, to, if there, and I thought this was sort of already an implicit agreement, but if you want to spend time and you see any factual errors in my articles, please send them to me, uh, and I will correct them. That I I've always said that, and I will always say that again. Um, you are consider yourself officially commissioned by me to do that. Okay, fine. But again, my criticism of you is not that you churn out sewage. My my criticism is of you, of you is that well, it's twofold. Is that on the one hand you take a kind of what kind of Pontius Pilate, shall we say, attitude to others in your sphere who do churn, churn out sewage, and uh, the second thing is and you is also that, have. A, so let's be clear. That person, the only person I've. Is your accusation here that can you name the names? It's I heard academic agent. Is that who you're thinking of? No, I just you, you've said yourself like five or six times during this thing that you're like it's not my job to police the dissident rights sphere for, for errors. It's not my job to be a dissident right fact checker. That's your opinion, right? Yes. Yes. Well, I'm not. I, I, I've I've corrected people factually before, but it's like, I, I, I don't. I don't. Uh, I don't like create exhaustive lists or indexes. At the same time. You, you are pretty hostile to people who do attack the dissident right. People who attack the dissident right and say, no. I'm just sick of all the mistakes and lies. We'll go over this again. What I do not like is I don't like people taking mistakes and then spinning, taking a few mistakes and assuming, like, first of all, assuming that you understand that these... Uh, projecting essentially and, and let's be honest what you're doing is projecting hostility like for instance you criticize john carter who's a brilliant sub stacker and uh, uh, written many seminal essays because he got the wrong like in a sub stack note he got the wrong uh communist who who, who did the Holland war like and and it wasn't it wasn't even that he wasn't guilty of murdering tons of the ukrainians it just wasn't he wasn't guilty at the specific time in question I'm fine if you want to make that correction. What I'm not fine with is John Carter made this mistake. Therefore, John Carter is a liar and a spewer of trash, as you say. Okay. That is the connection that I think is completely illegitimate. You can't take a mistaken fact and then use that as a personal indictment against the person in question. Now, I will correct the facts, but at no point are these corrections and facts short of evidence and, and provable evidence of malfeasance will they be used as a character assassination against the against the people collectively or individually who made those mistakes? Okay, is that so, the, is that I, I feel like I meant this. Is that distinction? I guess no, understandable. I, I, it's clear. 